Today in Social Studies 9, we learned about events that lead to the Cold War. Students were given this fill-in-the-blank handout, which we call the Matrix, and then they had to look around the room for notes. But for those of you that weren't here or were ill, Mr. Fitton has written the notes on the board with a fill-in-the-blanks, just to tell you a little bit about it. Uh, so here is the sort of lecture that we went through. First of all, we said there are several causes of the English Civil War. Number one was Charles I's personality. Uh, for instance, he hated Parliament. In fact, anytime he could rule without it, he would choose not to. Uh, he also lived an extravagant lifestyle, which the people disliked, so he had lots of paintings, lots of gold, lots of jewelry, bling as you guys would say today, and he did something horrible. He married a Catholic, and if you remember from Bloody Mary's reign, we know that Catholics, we did not want them on the throne in England, and we didn't want to see Catholicism brought back. Remember that clip that we watched on Bloody Britain? And, and uh, the fourth thing that he believes in that really riles the public, makes them very upset, and will lead to the Civil War, is that he believed in the divine right of kings. Now, this philosophical belief that his rule was absolute, he could do what he wanted, he was placed on the throne by God, is going to get him very, uh, in very much a lot of trouble with the English who believe in Parliament. So the king has to rule with, uh, with Parliament. So this leads to the fact that, that Charles doesn't want to talk to Parliament, uh, leads to the fact that he has to raise money on his own because he can't rely on them for money. So he brings back an ancient tax called ship money, which is really, really upsetting. It's basically a, a tax that used to be used on coastal towns levied uh, to create warships to protect England. And in this case, he just takes that ship money and uses it on himself for bling. Next thing, he brings back an ancient tax called tonnage and poundage, which is basically a... He brings back tonnage and poundage, which is basically a tax uh, on the, the basically the tonnage and poundage of stuff coming in and leaving England on ships. He also billets his soldiers and people's houses, which makes you pretty upset. Imagine tomorrow I said you have to have a soldier come and live in your house and you have to feed and take care of him. He also sold noble titles, so for the right price you could become a knight, a lord, a baron, an earl. You could be whatever you wanted, and this really waters down the nobility, and the nobles now get mad at him. So ordinary people are upset at having soldiers be billeted. Anybody who, uh, who makes money is upset at the new taxes, and now you've got the nobles mad at you because you're just giving away nobility. He also mortgaged royal properties to make money, and he forced people to give him loans. So these are other reasons. So first of all, Charles's personality, that's why people dislike him, and then the fact that he is raising taxes and raising money in spurious ways. Now one of the third things that's going to cause the English Civil War uh, is the lack of reform in England. So the poor make up the majority of the population, and you don't want angry poor people, especially when 95% of them uh, make up your population. There's also been a Protestant revolution. So at this point, as we know, English, England is no longer Catholic since Henry VIII, and there's been a few hiccups along the way. But all of a sudden, people in England notice that Laud, who's the archbishop, is still decorating churches, which is a very catholic -y thing to do. And in England, that, that leads people to think, uh-oh, is Bloody Mary coming back? What should we do here? Uh-oh. He also won't let Parliament have more power, and we're going to talk about them creating something called the Grand Remonstrance, which would basically limit the power of the king, but that's uh, something for a later date here. And at one point, Charles decides very unwisely, and he don't mess with these people, he decides to tell the Scottish, who are Presbyterians, to be more like Anglicans. So he wants to force them to basically worship in the way that he wants, which is going to, once again, uh, like we said here, upset the Scottish and lead to a war. So because there's a war, Charlemont wa Charles wants to raise money through Parliament, through forced loans, etc., and all of these things, uh, but he needs to go to Parliament because he needs more money than he can raise on his own. Another fourth reason why people are very upset and that causes the Civil War is their inability to speak out against Charles. During this time period, because he was an absolute monarch practicing the divine right of kings, people like Walter Prynne would try to speak out against him and they would get charged with something called seditious libel, uh, which would be basically saying spurious things about the king. You would get branded on each cheek with uh, S and L. You would get your ears cut off and nailed to, uh, nailed to a wall in public. These were harsh punishments for anybody who dared criticize Charles and, and the Stuart dynasty. He also had something called the Court of Star Chamber, which was basically a secret court where you could be tried by the king and you could have everything taken away from you. So say Charles wanted some money, he would just throw a noble in the Court of the Star Chamber and imprison him and take all of his stuff. 
these things lead to the civil war. Uh, so at first, there's a what's called the short parliament. So Charles calls parliament and says, okay, I want to go to war with the Scottish. I need money. The short parliament says, uh, says no, basically, we're not going to give you, give you taxes. Uh, we're not going to give you lots of money. So what he does is he dissolves them because parliament doesn't want to go. Then the next parliament, he calls them back and says, well, I, I need money again. The long parliament sits, and this is 1640, Charles wants even more money. But the Parliament says, okay, only if you kill Strafford and Laud. Strafford was the guy that helped Charles make taxes, and Laud was the guy decorating churches. So he actually signs their death warrants, and they're, uh, they're executed, but Charles really is upset about this. Parliament then, in the long Parliament, dem decides, to, uh, decides to debate the Grand Remonstrance. And this, like I was saying earlier, uh, was a bill that would have basically limited Charles's power severely and made Parliament have supremacy. And at this point, uh, they're debating the Grand Remonstrance. It passes only by a narrow margin with all of the nobles that are voting on it. Charles sees this and goes, oh, they're really indecisive. So he decides to invade Parliament with 500 people. So he gets his army and invades Parliament, which was totally illegal at the time. And to this day, King of England's not allowed to, to enter the House of Commons because of this incident in Canada. And so at this point, the Civil War has started. So Parliament decides to flee and create its own army. Charles decides to go north and create his own army. And this is going to be a very, very long and drawn-out Civil War. So if you're away that day when we went over this, here are all the answers for you with a tiny bit of a lecture. Have a good day.